Yeah. My yeah. name is Mendel Rubinson. Okay, cut. Okay. I'm Mendel Rubinson. I'm an organic farmer and I live up Deadman Creek. I'm Saul Rubinson. I'm an organic farmer and I live up Deadman Creek. Well, actually, sustainable energy source is a good question because my sustainable energy source is my body. And uh, I'm proud of using it instead of herbicides and pesticides and uh, chemical fertilizers. Seven On this years. piece of land, about 30, 30, 30 years, 30 yeah, years. 30 years right here at 18 kilometer Deadman Creek. Pretty well, my whole adult life has been organic. We kind of grew with the movement. I think Saul was kind of born into it. I was born into it. Okay. <laughs> it's in but my blood. <laughs> what inspired me was seeing the environmental stuff in the world go kind of on a downhill spiral, right? I'm organic for, uh, for environmental reasons. The spiders can't really speak, so uh, by becoming organic, I kind of am helping the wildlife out there. There's good bugs as well. When you kill in the bad ones, the good ones die too. The bees are going right now, by the way. The bees are disappearing really fast at an alarming rate. Kind of in me, and I like the place, and I like to be outside, and I like the environment. And it's good. Yeah. I would say it's in his blood. Right. Well, the biggest cha challenge is definitely weeds. <laughs> 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 weeds are bad, but they're not all that bad because they're actually part of our uh, soil building program. Right. And I could get into a lot of farms, including organic farms, are laying out plastic mulch and suppressing the weeds and they're not really doing the environment a favor by doing that. It's not really sustainable. Lay down plastic mulch, whether it's made from oil or made from corn, uh, I think it's actually a detriment for the earth. Okay. And uh, I'd actually like to start a movement to have certification within the organic certification to certify people who don't use organic mulches. I forgot to say what we weed. Tell them how we weed. Yeah, we get down on our hands and knees and we crawl the garden a couple times a summer. It's about six acres. Yeah, we get down there and we get. I would put it this way: we actually get dirty. We get down. Yeah, right. <laughs> we get yeah, downright dirty. dirty. We get down and dirty, all right. <laughs> and actually, we love the dirt. <laughs> That's my mother. By doing that, you're also more involved in being closer to the plants and everything. Like you actually get to know every single one as you go on. The bears and the deers. Yeah, they're, they're a challenge too. <laughs> the bambies are our worst enemy when they get in the garden and oh, they start okay. eating cabbages and lettuce and, you know, and the bears actually do the same thing uh, on the years that they don't have food out there. Okay. You grow enough garden for them too. Right. <laughs> yeah, we feed the deer. <laughs> we, we feed the deer. Every year there's a patch yeah. or a patch that's gone. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what a big challenge is. A big okay. challenge is the growing stuff is, is the glory of it all. Right. Try getting rid of it. I think what has to happen is, is the public has to get educated okay. into not just shopping organically, but shopping locally. Right. And per, the preferable thing is to shop organic local. And uh, in a town of 100,000 people in Kamloops, most people should be ashamed of themselves for not coming down to the farmer's market and, and, and supporting, supporting us local people because if they're really concerned about, uh, about economics, they would be supporting us so we would have the money to spend in the town. Well, it was actually started by, by uh, uh, people in the United Church they were, they were doing a thing on, on world hunger. And they, they went around it like, how do we solve the world hunger thing? Let's start a farmer's market. I think it was uh, 76, okay. uh, 73, uh, the years go by. Okay. Yeah, we've been there since the conception. Yeah. Right. Maybe it was 79. Uh, I, I forget what year, but it was in the 70s Late somewhere, 70s. which was, is way behind me. Uh, just life in general. Yeah. <laughs> The second, the second you think you got it all together, some bug comes and hits you, or, or something happens and you don't have any money, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But uh, anyways, that's pretty well it. Uh, we've had a good life. I, I'm not complaining about anything. I think more people could be composting. Uh, people can quit using uh, herbicides and pesticides. That's a big one. I mean, for, especially for cosmetic use. 
the city of Kamloops should be commended for for already having done that. Okay. Oh, get rid of your dryer and get a clothesline. It's cheaper. <laughs> and it's cheaper. You worried about money? It's cheaper. <laughs> Use that. Who the hell needs a dryer in Kamloops? It's one of the driest <laughs> places on earth. Oh, the other thing that people could do is uh, figure out some way to keep your vegetables cool in the winter without using your fridge. Just lead by example. That's a good lead one. Lead by example. Lead by example, yeah. Well, I'm getting old, so maybe when I retire and do nothing, the world will be better off. <laughs> That's all I think of. Maybe when I back off a bit, I could start maybe uh, going to other farms and showing people how to do things and uh, how we did it. And, uh, there's lots of young people. Mael's here. She's a student from a, a university in Toulouse, and, and she's kind of doing a practicum here at our place. But my thing is uh, just to teach by uh, kind of like by example. And, uh, I guess Suzuki, David Suzuki is a guy. There's lots of people in the community that, that are good role models. Even the eggs are organic eggs okay. from, uh, from Goldmere Farm. Uh, they're my superheroes too. Yep. Don't panic, go organic. Yeah, don't panic, go organic. I love the Kamloops Farmer's Market and I hope it stays funky. <laughs>